Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online webinar. Sorry for the delay in getting this started. We do have a few technical uh, issues. Unfortunately, uh, Prof Soon is unable to share her video with us this morning, but we will continue and she will still be speaking through the presentation. So today's webinar is in health and well-being and the role of nutrition and lifestyle during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Sarah Havenden and I'm the Marketing Communications Manager at UKZN Extended Learning known as UEL. So in case you are unfamiliar with UEL, we are the Conti Continuing Education Unit of the University of KwaZulu-Natal and we offer all the short courses on behalf of the university. So we are offering these webinars as we are in full support and compliance with the directive of the national lockdown, which was issued to address the COVID-19 pandemic. So we are embracing the changes and have launched a number of projects aimed at providing free access to learning materials during this lockdown period. So one of these projects is our online learning webinars, and this webinar forms part of the four part nutrition series. So this is the fourth and final presentation and all previous uh, webinars from this series are available on our website. So our webinars will continue throughout June on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but please take a look at our final slide at the end of this webinar for further details on upcoming webinars or visit our website at www.ukznextendedlearning.com. So in terms of the format for this morning, we will go through the presentation and throughout the presentation, you are able to raise your hand or put any questions in the Q&A box. Uh, once we have completed the presentation, uh, Prof Suna will then address all queries. So I'd now like to introduce you to our guest speaker today, Professor Susanna Kazia. Uh, Suna is a registered dietitian, associate professor at dietetics and human nutrition, and an academic leader for teaching and learning in the School of Agriculture, Earth and Environmental Sciences at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Prior to joining UKZN in 2007, she was a senior lecturer at DUT for 13 years, a senior community nutrition dietitian with the Department of Health for three years, and a senior clinical dietitian at Tigerberg Hospital in Cape Town for three years. She holds a PhD in nutrition and dietetics from the University of Cape Town, a master's in dietetics from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, a Bachelor of Science Honours in Dietetics, as well as a postgraduate diploma in hospital dietetics and a Bachelor of Science Dietetics from Stellenbosch University. She has served as an invited speaker at numerous congresses, workshops and other events. Her research focus includes non-communicable diseases of lifestyle obesity, infant and young and child nutrition and food security with publications in local and international journal journals. She has authored a book stemming from her passion to communicate scientific information to members of the public and wrote a chapter for the scientific publication on the multidisciplinary management of colloquial cancer. Her biggest achievements to date are being a wife, mother and monster-in-law. So welcome Suna and over to you. Um, good morning everybody. Thank you for joining us. And again, apologies that we started a bit late. Um, technology can be trying it sometimes. So um, today we're going to talk about health and well-being and then the role of nutrition and lifestyle during and after the COVID pandemic. Now, um, just to, to look at the title for starters, um, COVID is going to be with us for quite some time. So if we say during and after COVID, uh, it's actually more related to for those individuals that are returning to work or are no longer um, uh, need to work at home. And then of course, with children returning to school. So this morning's session is going to include a lot of practical advice as opposed to a lot of theory related concepts that I might have addressed in uh, previous presentations. Um, Sarah, can you just um, change the slide for us? So um, just um, to, to start the morning on a, a more humorous note, uh, I'm sure you might have seen that because of COVID, there were so many memes that were going around and some of them are actually really funny. And um, if we start looking at um, this top gentleman top uh, here, um, who says, boss, can you work from home until you feel better? And of course, why I included this slide is there's a lot of anxiety amongst parents and amongst um, 
members of the public that are actually returning to work and whether they are um, going to feel safe, etc. So it's not unusual to feel anxious during this time. And then um, looking at this meme, um, I think for a lot of people uh, being in lockdown, being at home meant that although they could work from home, um, they might have overindulged or because food is more freely available, they might have um, had more chances to eat and snack and as a result gain unnecessary weight. And then um, this uh, one here of Barbie before and after is then um, again uh, related to the fact that a lot of people might have experienced weight gain during this period. Um, and if this one being my favorite and especially with our kids going back to school, um, the one thing that we've learned from COVID is that it's important to wash our hands regularly, which um, obviously is something that we will have to continue um, once we are back at work and once children are back at school. Um, next slide, please. Now, um, you might think, why on earth am I talking about New Year's resolutions when we are um, now actually into June? But um, just, just uh, bear with me. Um, I'll, I'll show you the light, hopefully. Um, so for starters, a New Year's resolution is some something we, we make um, sometimes New Year's Eve or on New Year's Day. Um, relating to what we are going to do better or what we're going to try harder at in the coming year. And um, if you look at the statistics of how many people actually are able to stick to their New Year's resolutions, they actually say 35% of those who make them um, uh, have actually um, not followed through by the end of January. Um, and then only 23% of those who make the resolution will see it through to completion. In other words, they will make the resolution and they would carry it um, right through until the end of the year. Next slide, please. So, uh, why do people um, ditch their New Year's resolutions or why are they not adhered to? And um, these issues um, and pointers that I've listed here are actually very clearly related to COVID as well. So first of all, people set themselves goals that are not very clear. And if a goal is not clear, um, it's very difficult to adhere to and to follow through. Um, people sometimes might, let's say your New Year's resolution was that you were going to start jogging. Um, they might find that they start jogging for too far um, and too many days of the week. And also maybe they've set themselves so many additional New Year's resolutions that they've become uh, feeling overwhelmed and discouraged. And then some people are actually not being able to, to change or, or ready to change for that matter. So when one decides to make a change in your lifestyle or your diet, um, it's a matter of um, knowing yourself well enough to determine, are you actually ready to take that next step and make that change? And then sometimes we make resolutions or decisions and we want to achieve our goal as quickly as possible. And that is why I referred to point four as uh, treating a, a, a marathon like a sprint. And when it comes to uh, adopting healthy lifestyle habits um, and eating habits, um, it's important not to treat a marathon as a sprint and not hoping that the, the outcome and um, let's say maybe losing a few kilograms is going to happen very quickly. Um, so it's better to just take it slow and be realistic. And then also fixation on the end goal, meaning that um, people are so fixated on what they want to achieve uh, sort of towards the end uh, that they actually don't realize that they should take it step by step and take one day at a time. And then, of course, sometimes we make changes to our lives and then we find that the change is not enjoyable at all. And that's a very obvious reason why many people don't follow through with any resolution. And then again, trying too hard, which links to some of the other points. Um, for instance, let's take again the example of somebody deciding that they're now going to start uh, jogging, uh, whereas during lockdown, they, they were very sed uh, sedentary at home. So now instead of maybe starting off with jogging, um, let's say two kilometers every morning, they now want to um, jog eight Ks every morning. 
um, and then in the process you become so stiff and sore that you actually feel that you you can't follow through um, and you do, some people then um, if they change uh, their behavior they don't track their progress and progress with any lifestyle or eating habit that you would like to improve um, you should actually celebrate small wins so for instance if you have been drinking 12 cups of coffee every day while in lockdown and you now decide I'm going to um, cut down my coffee intake. Um, it's a matter of seeing, for instance, um, let's say after a week you've cut it down to eight cups of coffee, etc. And then you think, oh, but I actually really wanted to stop drinking coffee totally. But so just um, track your progress, whatever it is that you would like to change. And then very important for making any dietary or lifestyle change is that we need social support. It's very difficult to follow through with a healthy habit or something that you want to accrue and not having social support. And I'll get to that a little bit later, but um, especially um, in this time of lockdown, I think a lot of people um, might have realized that they thought of themselves, for instance, as introverts. And then due to the isolation of lockdown, they actually realize, but no, they actually do need people around them. So um, yes, it's, it's a lot easier to gain any type of success if you have some social support or support uh, social support network. And then uh, point 10 is quite important. Uh, when people decide to make changes, they're not always sure of what it is they would like to change, why they want to do it and how. Um, and that's another reason why they don't uh, follow through. Sorry, there's a typo there, it should say follow through. But the point then is uh, the what is sometimes easy, but the why is um, something that you must think through very carefully. And if you decide to make any changes to your diet or your lifestyle, the why, must actually be for yourself. So in other words, this is a process whereby you must be very, very selfish because um, you should not make changes that are uh, made uh, because of um, relatives and family members that have been nagging at you to stop doing this or do less of that. Um, it's very important that you should take ownership of that which you would like to change. And then of course the how is very important. Um, and here it's all about setting realistic goals of how you're going to bring that change about, how you will track your progress, etc. And um, next slide, please. So um, what is the solution then if we look at all these um, New Year's resolutions that people don't follow through with? The first thing then is to set very specific, realistic and attainable goals. So um, if we use an example of weight loss or um, that you've gained weight uh, while during lockdown, um, let's say you've gained five kilograms, be realistic about the fact that you are not going to lose five kilos within a week uh, because uh, lifestyle changes need to be attempted gradually and um, so your goals must be specific. Yes, I would like to lose five kgs, but I also need to be realistic as to how quickly I can achieve that goal um, because the goal must be attainable as well. And if you set yourself up for failure, you will actually not be able to achieve um, any positive changes in your diet or in your lifestyle. So um, that's very, very important. And if we look at an example of somebody who uh, may, might, might have decided that they would now, for instance, like to start jogging because they've been very sedentary. Again, don't um, aim for running 10 kilometers a day. Start with two. Uh, so after running two kilometers for a week and you feel comfortable, then you can increase it to four, et cetera. So um, by setting these attainable goals, you are also more likely to achieve your overall success. Then outline the plan that you are going to implement um, when you want to change anything about your uh, health or lifestyle, and also be very mindful of how are you gonna cope with barriers to success. Now, barrier to success would, for instance, mean that if we take somebody who wants to take up jogging now and the weather is very cold, the person might feel, 
I'm just going to give to uh, this morning a skip because it's so cold, but I'll try again tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow morning, it might be raining. So for instance, think of the barriers that you may encounter and find solutions or alternatives to those barriers. So for instance, if we take the example of somebody who would like to take up jogging, find yourself an exercise buddy so that if you are not in the mood or it's cold, that you actually have somebody uh, pushing and pulling you in the direction of, of getting on with that goal that you set. Um, then, of course, make a list of the pros and cons of this uh, behavior that you want to change. Um, and then, as I previously mentioned, it's very important to have a social network. And um, it doesn't have to be a large group, but just to recruit one person that's willing to, to take on this new behavior or this uh, uh, maybe curb the, the unhealthy behavior that you have managed to um, make part of your life during lockdown. Then reward yourself. Now, if, you, if your goal is to lose weight and you've lost a couple of kilograms, don't reward yourself with a chocolate. Reward yourself with other types of um, incentives, like for instance, uh, buying a book or uh, buying a pair of shoes or, or something that's not food related because uh, rewarding yourself with food if your goal is to lose weight is going to be very counterproductive. Um, and then it's very important, just as one would map out a business plan, um, track your success related to short-term, small attainable goals. And in those small steps, you will actually eventually be able to reach your ultimate goal. Um, let's say if you want to um, be able to jog 10 kilometers every morning um, and you start with small manageable uh, distances. And take one day at a time. We are only human. So maybe on some days you might not feel that motivated and there might be other um, issues that have happened. Or like, let's say you feel pretty distressed or depressed and you feel that you cannot stick to um, a healthier eating ha a plan. Um, and you, for instance, decide to, to binge on, let's say, chocolates. Um, start afresh tomorrow. Pretend then tomorrow is a new day and don't be too hard on yourself. And then, of course, it's very important to visualize success because by visualizing it, it's something that will actually keep you going in order to try harder at achieving the goal. Next slide, please. So now, um, as I initially mentioned, how is a New Year's resolution related to COVID? So um, in the course of COVID, a lot of people have developed good eating habits and lifestyle habits, uh, but then there are others that maybe have resorted to not such healthy eating and lifestyle habits. And um, just to give you a rough estimate, they say, um, the experts say that it takes 21 days to develop a habit, but within six months, if you, can't, if you keep up that habit, it becomes part of your personality. In other words, it becomes more entrenched in your day-to-day -day activity. And once this habit is entrenched, it's going to be more difficult to change it. And that's why I previously, in the previous slide, referred to the fact that one must set small, realistic, attainable goals if you want to bring about change to your diet and lifestyle. So it's a very good point in time, especially um, with a lot of uh, people being able to go back to work and with children returning back to school, um, make a list of all the good and not so good habits that you've developed during lockdown. And, and then you actually come up with an action plan of how you want to tackle, um, especially the bad habits, but also how you're going to keep up the good habits that you have cultivated during the period of lockdown. Next slide, please. So um, for those of you that have uh, tuned into some of my other presentations, you might recognize the slide, but um, just a reminder of what health is as per the World Health Organization. Uh, what I want you just to again be mindful of is that health is a complete um, state of physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. 
And COVID is um, the, the whole period of, of COVID and lockdown um, has resulted not in only people's lifestyles changing, but also the fact that um, we've had to deal with anxiety, stress. Some people became very depressed. And we actually now need to try to lift ourselves out of that, uh, those negative feelings. Because it's only if your mind is healthy that your body can also follow suit and vice versa. So um, just um, a reminder regarding that. Um, next slide, please. So I've just made a list of some positive habits that might not be related to you specifically, but maybe it will just um, get your mind going when you are making, hopefully, your list of positive habits that you acquired during lockdown and ones that you might want to keep up. So for instance, the first one is drinking more water. And then because um, we weren't able to go shopping as freely as we would like to, and for those of you that have um, started going shopping more regularly, you know the queues are very, very long. Um, it's a, a very laborious process to purchase anything. So um, it's a matter of appreciating being outside in nature um, and not um, spending most of your free time in shopping malls. Or if your habits were previously that you would spend, let's say, entire Saturday morning in a shopping mall, think of um, the positive um, feelings that you get from spending a bit of time um, in nature. Um, because light, when we as humans are ex exposed to um, natural light, it actually has an effect on your psyche in the sense that it curbs um, depression and, and negative feelings. Then, um, because restaurants have been closed um, and takeaways were not freely available, um, I think a lot of people have spent a lot more time with their family um, and maybe if the family habit is to eat, sit around a table to have home cooked meals, um, a lot of people have realized that this is something really positive and it's a time to connect with family members. So um, that could, for instance, be something that you might want to nurture um, as opposed to reverting to um, buying takeaways or ordering um, in meals, uh, etc. And then think of all the money that you've been saving on dining out and on purchasing takeaways, um, especially if you were in the habit of making use of takeaways and dining out a lot in the past. Now, it's very good and very enjoyable to, for instance, have a meal in a restaurant um, or to buy takeaways in the sense that it makes you feel happy. But just be aware of the fact that we do not know what goes into a restaurant meal or the ingredients that are used in takeaways. And therefore, they are very often high in salt, fat, um, etc. So um, at least if you cook at home, you know exactly what went into the pot and therefore what goes into your body. And then be grateful for small blessings. We've seen so much um, news related to the, the tremendous suffering people have incurred by losing um, uh, loved ones. Um, we've seen examples of people going hungry um, so um, COVID per se has been quite an eye opener. And if you feel that you want to sink into depression uh, because of, um, you know, just being exposed to news, negative news all the time, reading the latest statistics, just be grateful for small blessings because that can definitely elevate your mood as well. Um, so it's a matter of just being grateful for small things as opposed to uh, fixating on the bigger picture. Then, for instance, um, during this time, it was essential to connect with family and friends that live far away or even that live close by to connect with them by phoning them or maybe having a virtual meeting with them or a get together. So don't lose those habits and continue staying connected because that's very, very important for emotional well-being. And then we spoke, for instance, about examples of exercising more often. So if you've done so, please keep it up. Um, next slide, please. 
in, in one of my previous presentations, I spoke about blue light. And blue light is um, something that's part of um, sunlight. Um, and it's not bad, therefore. But uh, devices like a TV screen, um, a computer screen, um, your um, a cell phone, and any other devices or like a tablet, they actually all emit what is referred to as blue light. Now, if you um, are in the habit of spending a lot of time on devices that emit blue light, especially at night or closer to bedtime, it can actually disrupt your sleep um, cycle. And it could interfere with the ability of your body to get quality sleep. So for instance, if you have found that uh, for the past couple of weeks, you have settled down with a book as opposed to watching television or spending time on other uh, devices, um, keep up the reading because um, it is something that, uh, especially for the insomniacs out there, that will definitely um, make a difference towards uh, having, you know, falling asleep more easily and also getting good quality sleep. We spoke about eating fewer takeaways and home delivered meals um, previously in terms of the cost that you would be saving. Um, cooking at home then is something that um, one should try not to um, ditch once um, we are able to freely return to work. Um, some people might have found that they've started pursuing a hobby while during lockdown. And it's very, very important to have hobbies or activities that are not work related. So if you've tried out a new hobby and you found it very fulfilling because you had more time on your hands, make sure that your hobby isn't uh, left on the back burner once you return to work. And then um, a lot of people have expressed, just from what I've been reading um, of what people have been saying um, across the globe, um, people now, due to the fact that they've been saving time or not having to rush to work, etc., they had actually more a time to self-reflect and getting to know themselves better. Um, and that can be very helpful because you can only be good to yourself if you actually know what your strengths and weaknesses are and, and what makes you happy. So, so that's also something positive. And then, of course, it's very important during a COVID and for, mat for that matter, it doesn't actually have to be COVID related, but it's extremely important to take care of your health, um, both from a physical as well as mental perspective. Next slide, please. Um, then just a few other positive habits that um, should be nurtured post lockdown is um, if you started, for instance, doing do-it-yourself activities that you previously paid for, um, you can now actually start thinking, but do I actually really need to spend money needlessly to um, pay somebody to do these tasks, which I now have had to do myself because um, we are, haven't been able to make contact with the outside world. And then very importantly is to maintain a better balance between work, work versus relaxation. Um, because I think once we are back in the rat race and we are, are back at the office, um, it's very easy for work to just swallow up our lives. But it's very important for both physical and mental well-being to strike that balance. Getting enough sleep is the one thing that has been propagated as being extremely important to um, fight COVID. So the, the whole concept of getting enough quality sleep um, is something that you should be mindful of because it does make a huge difference to your um, immune system and, and also your emotional well-being. Because if you rest it, you tend to be more positive and you can cope with a lot of barriers and curveballs that life throws at you a lot better. Then a lot of people have mentioned that um, in their personal relationships with their partners, COVID has re uh, resulted in them actually reconnecting with their partners. Partners. I know we might have read statistics of people that have uh, where their relationships have deteriorated during COVID, but the general trend is that people have been uh, 
expressing the fact that spending more time with their partners has actually strengthened re their relationships. Um, and I think, again, this is where the whole issue of social support comes in and your partner knowing you best. And if you've nurtured your relationship during COVID, make sure that you keep working on it and that you never take it for granted once lockdown is over. Uh, we spoke about um, focusing on the positive. And then, especially for, for those of you with children where you had to homeschool your children, I think COVID has, for many people, um, maybe overstretched their ability to multitask. But if, the, if where people have actually managed to successfully homeschool their children, as well as juggle uh, work and cook and do all the things that was required of them, you should actually celebrate the fact that you have been able to do all these things during lockdown. Um, then, of course, practicing self-discipline um, has been very important for a lot of people because it's much easier to lie on the couch watching television as opposed to a deadline that you might have had for work. So um, if you've um, managed to improve your level of self-discipline, then keep up the good work. Next slide, please. Then um, a few negative habits that might require uh, uh, some ditching, as I would like to call it, is if you had no routine whatsoever during lockdown, um, you must just remember that once uh, lockdown eases, um, just to, to, to revert to more of a structured day and a routine. Um, eating due to boredom is not a good thing. I'll talk about uh, the whole issue, for instance, of emotional eating versus hunger later on. But um, eating due to boredom is not good. Snacking to curb stress is also not good. And of course, being inactive is not that good. So if those are some of the habits that you have accrued during lockdown, just be mindful of those and try to address them. Next slide, please. Then, um, do you need to diet as lockdown is lifted? In other words, do you, do you need to go on a weight reducing diet? And um, just remember, we have been in lockdown for the past couple of months, but this is not necessarily an expression of what your long term health will be. In other words, during this, uh, these, let's say, two months that we've been in lockdown, if your eating habits have worsened, just be mindful of the fact that it will not necessarily define your long-term health because it's a short window um, in your life where you have um, maybe reverted to not so healthy habits. Um, and food-related health is something that is determined by what you eat most of the time over a long period of time. So be kind to yourself if you've slipped up a bit and you haven't always done what you know is best for your body. Um, don't be too hard on yourself, but try to start on a new slate once you have got more structure and routine into your day. Um, and then the whole issue of normality, structure and routine, that will return gradually once um, you go back to work um, or you work in a, in a more um, balanced environment. For instance, if the children are no longer at home, so if you, once you're doing uh, the school drop off, going to work and seeing friends, you may have, um, it, you know, all those things will actually make uh, it easier to adapt structure and um, the lack of routine and structure will hopefully be a distant memory. Um, then also um, when normality returns and there's more routine into your life, the chances are that your eating habits will also improve. Um, because there wouldn't be um, this fridge uh, constantly calling you to have a snack, etc. Um, next slide, please. Um, then, getting we're still busy with this whole issue of whether you should go on a diet as lockdown is lifted. Um, and here, I just want to give you a few words of caution. Very restrictive diets uh, for weight loss purposes are actually dangerous because it can um, play havoc with your emotional well-being in the sense that it could result in feelings of deprivation, it can cause cravings, 
Um, and that in turn could lead to binge eating. In other words, where you actually binge on especially high energy foods um, and snacks. Um, this, the, the negative cycle would then result in feelings of guilt. Um, and it could also compromise your healthy relationship with food, which could actually then lead to disordered eating. So what I'm just trying to bring across here is that should you wish to uh, lose a bit of weight, um, just be careful that you don't go overboard um, and that you don't uh, follow a very restrictive diet. And you will probably start noticing that post-lockdown or as lockdown is being lifted, a lot of uh, weight loss products and aids and slimming aids will be advertised um, to help people supposedly get in shape. But um, just make sure that you don't make hasty decisions, that you don't spend money unnecessarily. And if you decide to change your diet, don't um, go overboard and make it too restrictive. Then also um, what one can do to, to um, have a bit more of a toned body or to lose that extra kilo that you've gained from sitting at home, um, think of what can you add to your diet rather than cut out. So for instance, it could be um, eating more fruit and vegetables, um, eating breakfast. Breakfast eaters, by the way, it's been globally shown that people that eat breakfast tend to weigh less as opposed to those that skip breakfast. Because if you skip breakfast, you end up being so hungry um, late in the day that you are more likely to eat a lot more food than you otherwise would have at that particular time. Um, let's say if lunch is your first meal of the day. Um, and then, of course, drinking water um, is very good because... We, we sometimes perceive ourselves to be hungry, but we're not really hungry. And um, in fact, it's been shown that sometimes people actually eat because in fact they are thirsty, believe it or not. So um, drinking water is very, very good um, to also assist you with, with um, getting your weight down. Next slide, please. Um, then listen to your hunger rather than your appetite. Um, now, hunger is something that is triggered by uh, hormonal functions in our body. But appetite is something totally different because appetite is something that's triggered because you see that it's 10 o'clock on your cell phone. So you think, oh, it's snack time. Or for instance, you uh, might see um, somebody else eating uh, a particular item and you might think, oh, I'm so hungry now. Um, so in other words, appetite is something that uh, occurs because of external cues, whereas hunger, true hunger, where you actually need to eat, is where your body sending you a signal that it's now time to have a meal. So just be aware of the difference between hunger and appetite. So appetite then are those um, aspects that trigger um, um, our need for food because of external cues uh, when we're really not that hungry. So always think it through. Am I hungry or am I thirsty or am I bored? Because boredom is very often a reason why people also overindulge or eat unnecessarily. Then eating slowly is very important because it takes about 10 minutes for your stomach to communicate to your brain about whether you are satisfied or not. So chew every mouthful slowly. Um, and I can't say to you, chew it every bite 60 times, um, but the point is just to savor every mouthful. And then what is also helpful to pace your uh, meal time is to maybe put your fork and your knife down between mouthfuls, because that can also help you to eat more slowly. Next slide, please. So if we then look at healthy eating during COVID and beyond, um, eating healthily um, is very important for both your physical and psychological well-being. Then a healthy diet um, is far more than just for the moment in the sense that if you eat healthily, um, it reduces your risk for non-communicable diseases such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and obesity. 
And you might have been made aware during COVID that, for instance, diabetics and those that carry extra weight um, are more at risk for mortality um, related to COVID. So um, it's very, very important then to, to follow a healthy diet to reduce your risk for um, contracting those non-communicable diseases. And then if we follow a healthy diet, it also um, is an aid to a healthy emotional state. So a healthy diet can help you to overcome or prevent the onset of depression and anxiety. And then of course, if you're anxious, stressed or bored, it can result in emotional eating. And emotional eating is definitely eating that is not linked to hunger. In other words, um, these external cues that you experience or your state of mind causes you to eat when you actually don't really need food at all. Then if you want to eat more healthily, you do not now have to go cold turkey and ap uh, eliminate absolutely everything that is um, labeled as unhealthy or that you perceive is being unhealthy. Um, so just a good start would be to avoid processed foods and um, in other words, pre-packaged foods because they tend to be higher in sugar and salt. And this brings us back to the importance of not losing our habit for home cooking that we might have cultivated over the past couple of weeks. Um, and then uh, if you do decide to, for instance, eat something unhealthy, just don't make it a habit and go slow. Uh, but generally then, when you make your decisions of what you want to uh, cut out of your diet, um, just focus on the more healthier options. Next slide, please. So um, if we look at what can we do to um, deliberately make healthy food choices, the cornerstone of healthy eating is meal planning because it prevents that daily frustration of deciding what you prepare. So if you plan what you are going to cook, um, you make a shopping list, et cetera, um, it will actually be very helpful when it comes to, to dinner time. And of course, with the long supermarket queues that we are experiencing, it also would uh, prevent you from having to make frequent trips to the supermarket, which can by itself be a very big source of frustration. So, um, and then, of course, having a shopping list prevents you from impulse buying, which can result in money spent unnecessarily. And then ensure the consumption of a wide range of nutrients. In other words, uh, if we talk about nutrients, we're talking about things like protein, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, etc. Because variety, eating a, a wide variety of food is the cornerstone of a healthy diet as well. So the next one then is be mindful that you eat plenty of fruit and vegetables. Um, fruit and vegetables um, are definitely um, one of the healthiest food items that we can eat um, because of all the um, vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals they contain. So um, for instance, when you buy, store, and cook fresh vegetables, it can become challenging during lockdown. Um, because of frequent, uh, you know, you're not always able to make frequent trips to the supermarket. So again, here, plan meals ahead, freeze vegetables or opt for frozen varieties. And here, I just want to remind everybody that frozen vegetables are actually um, by no means nutritionally inferior because they harvested and flash frozen at the time when they are at their optimum quality. In other words, um, they literally harvested and then they are actually frozen. So um, if you cannot find fresh vegetables, um, frozen is also good. Um, and then you can use fresh vegetables in dishes that, um, such as stews that can be frozen for later on. You can resort to, for instance, uh, canned fruit and vegetables, but just be careful of what the fruit or the vegetable is, is canned in. For instance, if you buy a tin of peaches, um, it might be swimming in a very thick syrup. Um, and of course, we don't want all that unnecessary sugar. So make sure that you actually drain the uh, fruit or the vegetables very well 
and that you don't ingest the syrup that comes with the fruit or the brine that the vegetables are um, canned in. Next slide, please. Then um, uh, another few tips that I have is to choose whole wheat bread and high fiber breakfast cereals. And if you're not always sure what whole wheat or wholesome bread is, the heavier and denser a bread, the better is, it is for you. Um, so in other words, if you buy a loaf of bread and you accidentally put all your groceries on top of that bread in your supermarket trolley and the bread comes out being totally squashed, that's a very clear indication that that is not the healthiest option because the more denser, heavier uh, breads are generally the ones that are much higher in fiber and that means that they're going to keep you satisfied for much longer and it will also curb constipation. Then uh, make an effort to keep healthy snacks around, like for instance, apples and nuts. Um, nuts are expensive, yes, but only a few nuts can curb your appetite very well. Um, and here I don't talk about exotic nuts um, or expensive nuts, like for instance, let's say um, almonds, etc. Peanuts are also very good, but also just don't over snack on them because although they're healthy, they are very high in fat um, and therefore they by no means a dieter's delight. Then uh, opt for maybe whole wheat crackers with cheese. I don't want to uh, mention brand names here but that could be a very healthy snack. You could have yogurt with a banana. Just be mindful of the fact that yogurt, fruit yogurt that you purchase in store is very, very high in sugar. Um, and it's therefore better to go for natural yogurt and then you actually add your own fruit to it. Then um, you can also have whole wheat bread with peanut butter. Um, or for instance, if you like hummus, have it with carrot sticks, with celery, etc. Um, oily fish is always a good standby because it's a source of omega-3 fatty acids. And canned tuna, salmon, pilchards, pilchards or sardines, you can store for a long time. It's very versatile and it's very, very good for you because omega-3 fatty acids, for instance, fight inflammation. And then do not underestimate peanut butter because it contains healthy fats and it's a source of protein. So for instance, uh, putting peanut butter on your children's sandwiches for um, when they're back to school is always a good choice and make sure that you hydrate and that you get adequate amounts of fluid because it's essential for health. Um, you can flavor tap water by adding fruits or vegetables to it like lemon, lime, and cucumber. And something I just wanted to make you aware of here is that uh, be mindful of not buying flavored water because the word water makes us think that it's good for us, but once it's flavored, you are actually drinking something that has, contains just as much sugar as for instance, having a can of Coke. So um, we sometimes might think that the word water means health, but be, uh, it's especially with the flavored waters. So rather just drink tap water, or if you buy bottled water, make sure that it's unflavored. Next slide, please. Um, and then important is uh, to stick to set meal times. Um, for instance, make sure that breakfast is the start of your day and that you don't skip breakfast. And then plan other meals and snacks, snacks with regular intervals, for instance, three hours apart. The reason why I mentioned three hours apart is if you stretch your meal times too much, you're going to get hungry and that's then where snacking occurs. And snacks... Uh, especially the unhealthy ones can sometimes be very high in uh, energy, uh, salt, and sugar. So uh, regular meal times are also good for keeping your blood glucose levels um, at an even level, and that would prevent headache. It will result in you being more um, productive. Um, so it's uh, regular eating is key. And then allow yourself to indulge now and again because it can boost your mood, especially if you're feeling down or overwhelmed, and it prevents you from binging, um, on, uh, or, yeah, binging on sweet treats that you might have forbidden yourself from eating. So um, if you do enjoy chocolate, don't have chocolate every single day, but also don't cut it out of your diet totally, because you might find that if you then do eat one, 
you are so starved for that sweet treat that you're going to eat uh, far more of it than, than what you would under normal circumstances. Next slide, please. All right, so if we're striving for a healthy body weight, drop the snacks, uh, because snacks can be a good source of energy and nutrients for active people, but they are not essential if you spend more time sitting in addition to uh, uh, having a limited level of exercise. So as we previously mentioned, follow a three meals a day approach without any added snacks, um, and that will actually also curb weight gain. Um, if you do snack, snack on filling low energy options like raw vegetables, fruit, and popcorn. Now, popcorn is a very, very good snack, but just be mindful of the ones that you buy in the supermarket where you pop it in the microwave because they sometimes uh, have a lot of butter. I'm sure you might have noticed when you open that um, container once the popcorn is popped. So um, try to uh, make your own popcorn at home and use uh, as little oil as possible or pop popcorn in your microwave um, because, um, yes, the popcorn is very filling. It's low in energy, but it's what, what uh, we add to the popcorn when we are popping it as such. Then lighten your favorite recipes. And this by this, I mean, make sure that you are mindful of just how much fat you add to your favorite recipes. So uh, lockdown might have helped some of us to rediscover our kitchens, um, surf on the internet for, for nice recipes, etc. But uh, so that from that perspective, it's a very good thing. But be mindful of very elaborate dishes that are high in fat because they have rich sauces. You use fatty meat and you add a lot of oil, margarine and butter to the dish because that is not uh, very conducive to maintaining a healthy body weight. Next slide, please. Then uh, I'm not going to go into much detail here, but um, herbal tea is something very good to drink. It's very high in antioxidants. It doesn't necessarily have to be rooibos tea. There are all sorts of other herbal teas out there. Green tea has many health properties. Um, and the positive of these uh, teas is not only the fact that they um, contain many antioxidants, but you don't have to drink them with milk and sugar um, because that adds additional energy to, to your uh, diet. And if you are a, a regular tea drinker or coffee drinker, in the course of the day, all that milk and sugar that you add to coffee and tea can also contribute to weight gain. So um, tea, for instance, would um, help you to keep optimally hydrated. And it also gives your hands something to do when you're bored or anxious. So you're less likely to, to snack. Next slide, please. Then um, last but not least, um, what about our children going back to school? Um, and first of all, we should not underestimate the impact that COVID has had on children during the past couple of months. Um, I think they feel just as stressed and unsettled as adults do. They also read the news and see the scary statistics. So when you actually need to settle your child into going back to school, um, you can start prepping them and getting their minds around going back into a school routine. You can involve them uh, when it comes to planning what will go into their lunchbox. If they're very anxious, you might want to drop a small little note in their lunchbox or a, a sweet or something that they really enjoy that you know is their favorite food. And also um, when you are planning this lunchbox together or when you spend time with your children, um, make time to listen to their concerns and fears so that they don't feel unsettled and fearful. And then, um, there have been incidents pre-COVID or pre-lockdown, I should say, of children being bullied um, because the parent, for instance, had COVID or et, et cetera. So um, in this time, especially when children are emotionally vulnerable, it's very, very important to make or, or to be aware of virtual or face-to-face -face bullying that your child might be um, exposed to. And then, for instance, 
Also be mindful of the fact that a lunchbox content goes far beyond the food that it includes. In other words, it's a symbol um, or it could be a symbol for the child to, to be exposed to something familiar, um, something that is homemade. Um, and it's also, if you put a bit of care into your child's lunchbox, it's also um, a sign that you, I call that they're batting in the child's court. But it shows that you care, the child feels more connected, especially when they're sad or lonely or unsettled when they return to school. And of course, food is a symbol of love um, and connection. So just be aware of that. Um, and that will also hopefully help your child to settle back into school and to, to um, start cultivating a routine. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, just a few take home pointers, um, whether you just want to live healthily or maybe shed a few kilos that you cultivated during lockdown, drink more water or herbal tea, um, distract yourself with a game or call a friend when you are bored or lonely um, and don't revert to emotional eating. Do some quick um, exercises at home or outside depending on your uh, living circumstances. Uh, plan to cook proper meals and take time to enjoy them with your family. And then we spoke about the importance of planning your shopping trips and not to stock up on, um, on unhealthy foods and also to know your cravings and prepare healthy snacks so that if you know that you um, or have cultivated the habit of snacking or if you feel that you're craving something, that there are uh, healthier as opposed to unhealthy options in your snack cupboard at home. Next slide, please. So if you would like to um, contact anybody at Extended Learning uh, related to um, this presentation or other presentations that have been uh, live streamed during the past couple of weeks, there are the contact details. Um, and next slide, please. Um, on this slide, um, you will see then is just a rundown of other webinars that are still upcoming for the next couple of weeks if you would like to tune into them. Um, and thank you very, very much. That's it from my side and I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you, Suna. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to type it in the Q&A box. Or if you would like to ask your question live, you can raise your hand and then we will open your mic. Um, just in the meantime, I'm going to just launch the poll where you can rate the session today. Um, but I just, maybe I have a question for, for you, Suna. You yeah. said um, that you should try not to snack and stick to three uh, meals a day. Um, this obviously differs when it comes to, to children, hey? Yes, well, I mean, children are extremely active and therefore it's not a bad thing for children to snack. Um, in fact, I think it's sometimes essential for them to snack because their tummies are small and therefore they need energy, uh, you know, while being so active. So I think it's just a matter of when um, you make snack foods available to your children, just make sure that it's not unhealthy snacks. Yes, um, treat them by all means, but um, also try to cultivate healthy snacking amongst, you know, amongst your children. Okay, th thanks, Suna. I don't see any other questions that have come through at the moment, but if, if you do think of something at a later stage, you're welcome to... Oh, wait, I have something here. Thanks for an excellent presentation. This is from Bev. How effective is intermittent uh, fasting for weight loss and is it recommended? Um, hi, Bev. Well, um, intermittent fasting, they have done trials where they've compared it to other uh, methods of weight loss. And the conclusion was actually that it's not necessarily more effective um, simply because um, they sort of worked out how much energy people consume when they practice intermittent fasting. So it's not at this stage, we don't have enough evidence to show that it's superior. Having said that, 
it's very important to have, to strive towards a healthy body weight. Um, and if you feel that it works for your lifestyle to actually um, limit your food intake to certain times of the day only, then um, that's perfect. But then just make sure that you choose a variety of foods. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Bev, for that question. Yeah, as I said, any further questions that you, you think of at a later stage, you're welcome to uh, send them through in the, the email we send out later on, which has the video link. There is an option for you to provide further feedback or ask any other questions. But thank you, Suna, for sharing with us again today and with all your webinar, webinars throughout the past four weeks. I think you did an excellent job with your first webinar experience. Yeah, and thank you for all the tips you shared today. They are quite helpful and hopefully we can um, take them back into our own homes and use them in the workplace. So the videos and the slides will be available on the UEL website. Um, we will be sending out this direct link once it is ready. Thank you for attending all our attendees today and making this webinar a success. Do take note of the upcoming webinars that are on the screen now. We are working on a few more which will be launching as soon as we finalized but next week tuesday we have our final part in our resilience through mindfulness series this is part four in connection and then we're launching a new series next thursday the 11th of june the series is there be dragons Transi transitioning through the unknown and this is the first one leading through uncharted waters so we also have a few online courses that we are offering for free during lockdown so please do take a look at our website to see these that we have on offer. You can find them under the, the free courses tab. Our website is www.ukznextendedlearning.com. Otherwise, we hope that you enjoyed the session. Uh, stay safe and we'll see you next time.